Kathleen brought in a picture of a ring that she had fallen in love with, and she asked us to make it using her diamonds. The tools we use are specially made so they don't get all gunked up by the wax. This tool has a razor sharp edge between the black section and red section. It's actually boring out the wax to the correct finger size. As you can see, this tool is shaped like the bottom of a diamond. We'll use it to cut a perfect seat so the diamond sits straight and tight. We make the ring in wax and use the lost wax casting process. This means that when we're finished carving the wax, we'll surround it with plaster of Paris. After that hardens, we'll put it in an oven to burn out the wax. This leaves an empty cavity into which we'll pour liquefied gold and produce a replica of what we originally made. Pouring the gold is a little dangerous. We hold a saw in one hand to prevent the gold from overshooting the plaster. Then we grab the crucible, which is about 1700 degrees, and pour the gold into the opening. This is what the raw casting looks like. It'll take hours of work to make it look like a piece of jewelry. Custom jewelry is my favorite part of the job. Using diamonds and gems that have a lot of meaning to you, we make one-of-a-kind jewelry that gives me a sense of great satisfaction and purpose. The final step for white gold is to plate it with rhodium. Why do we plate it? Well, white gold starts out as 24 karat yellow gold, so it's still a little yellowish. Rhodium gives it a true white color. Just as I'd hoped, her reaction says it all. <laughs>